What's going on guys, Big VP back with another Game Case Arcades, Project Smart. I don't even know what category this would even fall into, but this is gonna be a DIY. I'm gonna be taking my logo, making a custom LED illuminated sign, almost like the stuff that you see on like an actual storefront. And we're basically gonna give the shop some accent lighting. Now in my videos I did want to put, I'm a big fan of my logo, I love my logo, it's my logo, I made it, I want my logo everywhere, so I'm a big fan of the logo and I figure now with the new shop and everything, I gotta put my logo in the videos. Only because I tend now to really say, and it actually does work, to be sure to follow me and subscribe to the channel, at Vic underscore VP, instead of, you know, putting in a PNG right here. Basically, we're gonna have it in the background without the ad symbol, obviously, but I'll tell you what we did, how we did it, and let's just do it. So the main objective is that I wanted my logo big. It couldn't be small letters, it had to be big, it had to be huge, and um, basically I reached out to a company on Etsy. His name was Frank Wee from the Display, what is it? From the Display Deal, um, hit him up, and I asked him for some block lettering. So this is not part of the DIY, but he did a really cool job and really hooked it up. Basically, he's got 14 inch um, letters, block lettering. It's gonna be awesome. It's huge, as you can see, like the V is bigger than my face. And basically now we're gonna put it on its own kind of setup so it could be portable and movable. I won't be like actually physically putting it to the wall. Basically, it will be kind of movable if I wanted to move it everywhere. For this, again, I didn't realize how big the letters were. He did have an option for like 10 inch letters and I was like, eh, I'd rather go big. It was only a couple hours more, so I went with the big letters. Uh, and in my logo, it's VIC underscore VP, so it's six letters. Um, and I figured they were at least a foot you know, wide, so we didn't need at least a six foot wide piece of wood. Went to Home Depot, Home Depot had this Rubbermaid shelf. Um, it actually fits pretty perfectly. Good spacing in between the letters. I already did some pre-stuff to make this work. Basically a background on this, we are gonna put our letters nice and neat. I already got it pre-drilled and we are adding LEDs to this, but it's not just any BS LED strip. Uh, shout out to Dr. Z, uh, Dr. ZZZ to be exact. We are gonna be doing an ESP 6266, something like that smart, intelligent LED strip. Basically, it's an assignable LED strip, almost like the stuff that you would put on like a Christmas display. So it's kind of like, you know, it's got individual addressable LEDs on it because I wanted this logo to be kind of very unique and blown out of this water. So basically, let's take a look at the parts that we got and we're gonna build it. First things first, we do have our, I believe it's 72 inches. I might still have the Rubbermaid sticker on it. No, I don't have it. Luckily with the shop, we could measure it real quick. Yeah, 72, it's six feet wide. This is a six foot wide shelf, again, from Rubbermaid Home Depot. And basically what I did is that I lined up the letters and I actually already pre-drilled um, some stuff. I did put um, quarter of an inch holes for the LED runs. We are doing a four wire um, LED run. No, actually my, my LEDs only need three wires. The audio cables that I have are four wires, so we're gonna use those. Again, the main objective is to have everything on this piece of wood. The back of this will have the wires going to the LEDs, and it'll also have the power brick to power the LEDs on it. But I couldn't leave it this bare black, because no matter what you do at Home Depot, they're always scratched up, they're always beat to hell, no matter what, like you'll never find a perfect you know, piece. You can kind of see like a road gash here, like, there's no way to do it. So, so what I did is that we did purchase a five foot, uh, I believe it's a five foot carbon fiber black on this. So five feet, our piece of wood is six feet. So we are gonna have to line this up accordingly. I already pre-thought about it and basically I did not want to see like a seam in the middle. I wanted this to be flawless. So luckily the eye in the Vic, it is a perfect top to bottom, you know, covers up the whole shelf. So basically I'm gonna hide our carbon fiber seam right underneath the eye. And as you can see, it literally fits perfectly. We're gonna put one strip here and then a second strip. We're gonna to try to make it look flawless. Basically right now, the first step we're gonna do, again, I already jumped a little bit, I did this beforehand, but basically 
The block letters are removable. So he's got the top that held him really but the one screw, these are 3D printed. Um, a little bit flimsy, but then again, like you're not really wrestling with this, you're not gonna be playing around with it. But basically, I already measured out everything and I already have everything pre-cut, pre-drilled. And basically, once it's time to actually mount, I am right now lined up accordingly. We shoot the, the screws in, just two screws, and that's it. So as you can see with the letter, I have it flush to the bottom in case I wanted to sit this on the actual tabletop. The top of it does stick out up a little bit. I was going to bring it down, having the piece of wood in the middle. But again, I figure in all honesty, because it is going to be portable and movable, it will most likely sit on the bottom of it most of the time. So I figure why not? We lined it up right on the bottom of the edge and I've really, I basically pre-made my holes. Enough of that. We are ready to start. Clean this off with some Clorox wipes. Basically want to make sure that this is definitely dry and all that. On the side here, you guys can't see where you are, but I did put a black Sharpie here to show basically where I needed my carbon fiber to end. And that's really it. We're gonna go, I'm gonna put a face down, bend back and cut, and then we're gonna do a small piece here. This should be real quick. I'm not gonna record it, but at least I'm gonna give you guys step by step and I'll be back. Quick update, got the first piece down. I always do my vinyl dry. Some people do it wet, meaning they put water on the base and then they put water on top of the vinyl. I don't do that. I usually have a credit card handy, but I actually had this face plate from the construction, basically rounded edge and all I've been doing is basically slowly, I basically take the whole piece, I cut it in half, meaning the white backing, I cut it in half, so I flip, cut the backing, and then I put it back. This way I can control and keep my vinyl straight. On this one, I'm gonna try to do the heat gun because I have a heat gun now. Uh, some people do suggest that you should heat gun it. I will try that, and luckily, like I said, the piece that I got, it goes over, as you can see, the actual piece of wood. The vinyl piece actually had a little rip in it, so I had to pull up a little bit, but it's fine, it worked in my favor. Don't really need a clean cut here, because again, basically we're gonna be flipping it and folding it. So before I flip, I'm gonna basically tuck this underneath, not really sticking it hard. I'm gonna do this side first, and then we're gonna flip to do the other side next. All right guys, so quick update. I got the first side down, use the heat gun, the hard thing about this vinyl all the time, at least for me, is anytime you have a perfect right angle, it, it's very difficult to get it to stick. Um, so actually using the heat gun on the edges, it does actually vacuum it and keep it tight. You still do have a minor bubble, which I'll bring the camera in later on, I'll B-roll it. But you do have a minor bubble on the edge, but I'm not too worried about that because again, the letters go over the edge. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's DIY, so we're making it work. Now, we're gonna grab our next piece, going right here, and then we're gonna put the letters on. Real quick, I just wanna tell you again how we're doing this. So I got a smaller cut. This right here is my line. You can definitely see the carbon fiber to the regular wood. Basically, this goes underneath the eye. So, in reality, yes, you should always straight edge cut your stuff. I don't have a straight edge on me, but it is A-OK -okay because I'm gonna basically try to line this up perfectly, meaning not the edge, but the actual design of the carbon fiber. So make sure you are putting it down if you are using carbon fiber kind of style. I'm more concerned about making sure that the carbon fiber lines up correctly. So on this, like I said here before, basically what I do is that I take this, I flip this back, and then I would take really half of it for that end. But on this end, the end is very crucial, so I'm only gonna take a little bit of the white backing off. So again, basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna fold this back and you basically just unpeel this. Try to keep this nice and steady. You could use like painter's tape. I just don't like putting other tape on top of this because this is essentially a tape. So this is sticky. So you really don't want to get this kind of messed up. I normally don't like cutting on the wood, but this is going to be covered. So again, I'm basically going to take this white. Be careful with your blades. We're basically going to make sure that this black does not fold down. I'm going to separate it. Good. See that? So now, like I said, this is still movable. Now I'm going to be able to not worry about the edges. As long as you have an overhang, you are safe. But my main concern is to make sure that I am at least lining up 
the carbon fiber type of lines. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you could definitely tell like where your line is. I'm happy with that. So we're gonna have it down. Always have the straight edge handy. Basically again, I'm able to pull. Again, the white is still here. I can still move this. But basically now I'm able to control it better. We're gonna take our air bubbles out. Uh, basically again, I just got it down. So now I flipped it. I'm gonna pull the white back a little bit. Not the whole thing. I'm gonna pull the white back just like that. Keeping my hand still on this white, we're gonna flip it back. And now basically, it's up in the air, so it keeps the vinyl up. And then from underneath, I'll be able to pull along as I go down. So again, I literally have straight edge. This is actually manufactured edge, meaning this isn't cut, it came from the roll. So now I do have a straight edge on this. And basically now, with our little curved edge, we can now pull. As you can see, I'm pulling my white, making sure that there is not much bubbles. You usually do want to put like a sponge material. I had it here, but this actually is a curved edge, so I'm okay. And now as you can see, I am up to the white that's on the backing. So now from underneath, I have my hand under it. I'm going to be able to pull a little bit at a time, come back. And now again, trying to keep it as straight as possible. Any little bubbles you see here, are the pre-cut holes, which after this, we're gonna be able to do like an arcade button. We're gonna put basically our X-Acto knife through it. And now we have our opening available to run wire. So after some uh, heat gun action, we literally have our face. This is perfect. You could definitely see, if I could just see my viewfinder, that'd be awesome. Let's see, can you see this seam right here? Maybe if we're not there, check this out. We got our new camera rig so let me bring you guys closer <laughs> and let's see yes you nope actually no i'm sorry that's the camera <laughs> i have the the view on it so right now this is it yes you do see it here but again the letter i covers that basically now we're gonna go around and these big holes are really for my led wires and we will basically be able to take our exacto knife and uh show you one real quick just like an arcade button we're going to go to this right here it's kind of cool i'm getting used to my camera setup i got this right here and we're basically just going to make a little hole that's it just like an arcade button and that's it this does not fit but with that we could even cut it out worst case exacto knives are very sharp you have to be careful with them and now basically i can now put my wire through this again literally playing with our new rig and if you guys want to see a video on the rig let me know it's pretty cheap pretty easy again using conduit there it is that's a good hole i made boom uh, again so basically it's line in the power is going to come in through here and then i'll show you guys how the led is going to go and it's basically going to be all behind the board it's very easy i have another one here let's take a look at that one real quick Again, down, and I'm just going to let the exacto knife make the cut. Again, we definitely want to cut it out. Definitely don't want to just have it sticking up. There you go. That just fell into place. And that is it. I'm going to spend the next couple minutes cutting out these holes. And we are now ready to mount our letters. So again, I literally have, I did each letter. So I literally put it here when I first, you know, was doing it. I literally screwed the letter in and then I took, I believe it's a quarter of an inch of a bit and then we made the holes. Again, I have my bottom lined up perfectly to the edge. My holes are lined up and now basically it's just going to be two black wood screws that I'm going to shoot into this. Alright next, so this is locked in. This letter is now moving. Real quick, while I do this, I'll explain to you how um, we came about. Um, I don't really know the price of it, but I think I paid about two fifty um, for each letter. Not each letter, <laughs> two fifty altogether. I think it came out to like twenty bucks a letter, 
or something like that. Um, it is a little bit on the expensive side because as you can see on my logo, we do have the blue underlining. So he only makes it just regular letter without the blue. So he gave me, he had to charge me a little bit for the underlining. So again, splits very nicely, comes apart and uh, it's really cool. I mean, I wanted to do it myself. There's a video out there of how to do your own like block lettering, but I'm not that handy. So I would much rather have somebody actually make it with like a CNC machine. And it was really awesome. So shout out to Frank, Frank Wee, uh, W-E-I. You can find him on Etsy. I'll put his um, link down below. And it's really awesome. I mean, I can't really complain. It, it came, I think it took about a week for him to make it. Um, as you can see, the edges, this is another thing. Um, I did the big edges. I think it's like, I don't know, an inch and a half to two inches. He has another one, which is like half an inch. So it's literally one of these. I didn't want that. I needed this because it has LEDs behind it. The big thing is though that this letter, it does have um, a white film in front of it. So when we are all finalized, we will be taking off the film and it is see-through. So that's where the LEDs will come into play and really work. So again, guys, luckily I did, you know, you gotta take your time with this kind of stuff. I mean, especially if you want it to look good, I'm praying that it's gonna look good, but basically, with me doing this beforehand, literally have everything spaced out equally. Um, and luckily as I put these screws in, I did um, do the black screws. As I put this in, even before I even pull the trigger, I actually feel my screw dip in a little bit because the hole was already made. So I know exactly, this should exactly line up perfectly flush and uh, it should be pretty awesome. Hopefully you guys can see how awesome this looks. I'm really happy with it. And you will be seeing a lot of this. It will be going up in my battle station. That's really what it was for. Um, I do plan to do a lot of live streaming um, soon. You should check out again my Instagram. You will see the battle station that we just did, that I just did, I should say. I gotta stop saying we. I just did an insane battle station. We got two 49 inch screens, center gaming screen. But the crazy thing is that um, I have this mount called I mounted or something like that, where the screen actually does a whole 180 spin. Um, so basically you could do from horizontal to vertical. The main reason I have those TVs is because everybody keeps asking me why do you have all those TVs. One of them is for surveillance of the house. And the other one really is supposed to be meant for like picture frame. Um, the vertical is going to be a digital picture frame. So stay tuned for that. That's probably coming up next. Now with this virus, I have some time and I'm able to bang out some videos. So now, as we can see, we literally have the letters all lined up, ready to go. Look at that spacing. So it's really kind of cool. Even with the six foot shelf, we pull this back a little bit. The letters do come off a little bit. There's a gap here and also on the letter P, there is also a gap. I will bring you closer. So now again, here on this edge here, you can see the P does come out a little bit. Again, evenly spaced out. Basically, I took the center of each letter and then I don't remember what the measurement I did, but this right now is looking pretty clean. And again, none of these letters move. They do come with screws to hold these place in piece, but now you can literally see how the plan is. LED wire comes in, the LED strip will come here accordingly, exit out. And then on the next letter, which on this one is going to go from here through the back is the wire, start here, come down and then out and then in. Like I said, each letter is going to get a strip of LED, which is now it's going to get a little messy, meaning we are going to be using a soldering iron, which I have behind the TV. And we are going to get this project done today. All right, guys, so it's a little bit difficult right now because my wife is sleeping and literally our bedroom is right above. But real quick, literally got it sitting and check it out. I got the first string of LEDs in. Again, everything clean for 2020. I got heat shrinks and all that. Again, Dr. ZZ. We have our ESP8266 running um, WLED. And pretty soon you're going to see why we are using these addressable LEDs. LEDs I got off of eBay. These are a little bit more expensive than your standard 
um, LED strip. But again, take a look at that. There's only three connections. You have your five volt, your ground, and your data. Usually this right here is four wires. Yeah, RGB and then power. So only three wires go into this. And as you can see, like I said, I already have one on this right now set to like so, uh, slow fade. But again, you can see I put the letter over it. It looks awesome, but I still have the protective coating on this. But right now, basically, each LED is individually addressable. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So you can imagine this will have about, I'm guessing, I don't even know, 300 LEDs. I don't know. But basically, basically what's cool about this setup and this thing is that you're going to see I'm going to have a sequence where it basically will chase through the entire system. So it'll start here, go through each letter like a bullet running through. So again, addressable LEDs. First string is up. Um, basically, again, using audio wire. So I soldered it. I turned my garage light off. Um, but now basically we're soldering each point. As you can see, I have the wire here. So now wire is going to go to the eye, run through and so on. Now, if you don't know how to do soldering, it's really not that difficult, guys. I really suggest that you do take up soldering and practice it because honestly, you'd be surprised at how easy it is and how useful it is. Um, next time, I probably would suggest I am using audio cable. Doesn't really matter what kind of cable you use. As long as it's like wires, it should be fine. These regular wires are very thin. These audio cables, I don't know what gauge it is, but it's a little bit thicker. But next time, be careful. I have stranded wire. You're going to want solid wire. So keep that in mind. I'm going to clean up this eye a little bit. All right, guys. And there we have it. The last LED is up in soldered, whatever you want to call it. Literally, that's what it looks like with the screens off. Now I want to show you real quick the awesomeness of this. So right now in the whole setup, you just saw it like fade in, fade out like normal LED strips would do. But... We do have the WLED app open. This has its own actual Wi-Fi. The, that's why this ESP8266, that's literally a mini like Wi-Fi hotspot. And basically now, check this out. I'm gonna go here and there's a lot of things I'm talking. I'm gonna do wipe real quick. This is how important these addressables are. If I press the wipe, oh, it's back here. That's why we need addressable. So as you could see, it literally wipes across, boom. So each individual LED is literally linked up. We cut LEDs. I literally had to sit here and count how many LEDs we cut. Uh, the roll comes with 300 LEDs in it. I took off, I think it was like 108. So I set up the WLED app for that amount of LEDs. I could show you real quick. You go into LED preferences and you can see it right there. My LED count is at 192. So it literally is perfect to the T, boom. And then it starts on that. So that again is addressable LEDs. And this has a lot of stuff on it. I mean, you could set it to single stuff. I mean, this has stuff that I don't even have any, look, it's like, this is like a list of it. I believe there is even a new like update, but like, you could do like a bunch of stuff. Again, this is really a software for like Christmas lights. You could, this is really what you would do for X lights, it's called. Again, check out Dr. ZZZ. He's the one that gave me the idea with this. He did a very simple how to and very easy. So check it out again, addressable LEDs. Let's put the cover on. Let's finally check out our logo. All right guys, and there you have it. We literally have our LED logo set six foot wide. This is literally six feet wide. Now it's gonna look perfect. Just real quick, some people are gonna ask me, how does the back of it look? And like I said, I'm gonna staple these down. You do have a couple of whites. And then right here is where we're gonna mount our ESP whatever it is, 2866, whatever it's called. We're gonna put that right here along with the power brick is gonna be right here. So basically all we need left are two hooks and we just gotta hook it on the wall. Literally sending across the garage, this thing is bright. I mean, I'm gonna have to adjust the settings, but again, there's a lot of color options. So 
it's kind of difficult to see it on camera. Let me at least kind of slow down this. Let's see if we could do maybe a ripple. Let's see what happens on this. Yeah, so th again, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's literally crazy. You can see it from afar, but it's still Meteor. Meteor is pretty cool. I think that's gonna be the set one. And the color palette on this is called Cloud. It's literally blue and white. Like, it's awesome stuff. We got some noise. Let's see what that looks like. We got BPM. Looks like it's going to the beat, I guess. Color waves. But again, I have this set to the palette of just really blue and white. It's not like party mode, like party color palette. I mean, this is a little extra. <laughs> it's pretty cool. At least you can kind of see how the colors are reacting. Um, let's see, there's a fire one. Don't know what's, oh, there you go. It's got a little blast of fire going, I guess. Juggle, stream. I mean, again, this is all because of the ESP 2866, whatever it is. I'm gonna have to mark it somewhere. This is called ICU. I guess it's kind of like uh, your like doctor's thing. <laughs> Multi comet, lightning. This is pretty solid. I like the wipes. Um, very simple, awesome. Like the wipes are pretty cool. These I, I really like these. Circus, out and in. Like these are awesome. And again. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do like the color fading on this, but like you could pick like, again, mine was cloud. Cloud was really like blue and white. You're gonna see like, it's just white and blue, see? Um, you could do, let's see, like sunset. I don't know what that means. See, it adds like a couple of colors, Rivendale, um, like red and blue. It's like a mixture of it. Splash, uh, light pink. It's got a lot. I mean, there's literally like, a ton of color options, a color, like a ton of settings. So all in all, this is awesome stuff. VPP, Game Case Arcades, check it out.